A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <sighs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father Francis with you uh, on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm trying to work with the video here. I've got my little watch. and <clears throat> Anyway, so, <laughs> um, well, I hope you're having a wonderful summer so far. It is, uh, summer's uh, starting to get kind of late now. We're kind of in the home stretch, I guess, that you would say of the summer season. <clears throat> it goes by awfully quick here. Um, one of the things that I guess I like about summer uh, is the, the wonderful array of fresh fruit that uh, we are really blessed and privileged to have. <clears throat> and uh, for me, I really enjoy a nice, crisp, cold uh, slice of watermelon uh, sometimes in the evenings or, you know, after after a, a nice dinner. I like uh, a lot of the stone fruits, whether they're nectarines or peaches or apricots. Um, you know, they're just beautiful plums. And, and just a lot of beautiful, ripe, delicious fruit. Now, <clears throat> you're probably wondering, well, where, where are we going with this with, with talking about food? Well, or, or, or fruit in, in particular. And <clears throat> we recognize that... Uh, that a lot of us, the old saying is, you are what you eat. And again, I'm not here to make a, a video about nutrition and health, but yet there is kind of a spiritual correlation. Because today we hear Jesus talking about he is the bread of life. Um, and again, we need to maybe look at that probably in a little bit more of a literal understanding than just a figurative understanding, the bread of life. <clears throat> so the readings today are kind of replete with a lot of uh, references to food and nourishment uh, and how we, how we gain health and well-being and peace of heart and mind when we are, if you will, living off the good things that God longs to give us. We find in our first reading today that Elijah is... <clears throat> I'm going to try and play with this just a little bit here, see how this works. Elijah um, is kind of in a very interesting and precarious situation. He's overwhelmed with fear, and essentially he's running away. He's, uh, he's really being challenged uh, at his upper limits, you know, the old saying, being raised to the, the level of your uh, incompetence, if you will. <laughs> And I think most of us have probably have been there at one time or another. At least you felt like, huh, this is way beyond me. Way beyond, as we used to say in the military, my pay grade. You know, it's like, ugh. And yet, sometimes that's how God gets us to grow beyond some of our own, our own limitations. <clears throat> A lot of times we, we do put limits on ourselves. And until we're really, really challenged, we never realize what we are fully capable of doing. But in order to to do those good things, uh, to kind of rise above in the middle of a crisis, you, you have to be fortified, you have to be nourished. Uh, and that's why good food, 
good healthy food is so important to us. Uh, now I don't know about you, but I know I can speak for my own self that, you know, in my uh, earlier years uh, in my life, I unfortunately, uh, you know, and still from time to time, uh, used to really be a fast food junkie. Uh, now I'm help, I'm very glad to say that up here in Lake Tahoe, we don't have a plethora of fast food restaurants. Now they have some in Truckee and that's like 20 miles away. But so if you get a Big Mac attack, you know, you really have to be pretty dedicated to the Golden Arches to, to satisfy that, that habit. If you, if you, if you were, if, if you were like me and I am and had that habit, that fast food habit. So I've noticed that I've naturally lost 10 pounds being here uh, just by not eating you know, fast food on a regular basis. And the other thing too is that I, I have to say is that um, I think I mostly eat fairly healthy food. I cook for myself for the most part. And I also have wonderful parishioners who like to sometimes bring me little uh, you know, uh, treats and, and nice meals from time to time, which is a, which is a real uh, blessing. Oops, that's a little bit too, there we go. Um, and so, you know, uh, but, but mostly they make homemade food, which is, you know, nutritious and good. So again, you know, we look at Elijah and he is running away because he's filled with fear. And yet he's told to do a couple of things. He's told to rest. And after he has this period of resting, then he awakens, the angel awakens him and he finds uh, at his head, this little hearth cake. You know, maybe it's a little piece of cornbread, homemade cornbread, or maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, something nourishing and some nice, fresh, uh, crystal clear, cool water. You know, nothing better to slake your thirst on a warm, hot day, day like today we're having up here. And uh, so he's nourished. And as a result of his nourishment, now he's able to face the fear and the problems that, you know, God has put into, into his life to surmount, to overcome. Um, so, there we go. So, um, <clears throat> so today, Jesus tells them that he is the bread of life. But here's the problem is that they don't, they, they, they have a cold heart, you know, and we're told in the second reading that, you know, we are, we are encouraged to cast off things like anger and fury and, you know, uh, harsh speech, I think it is. You know, and quarreling and angry outbursts and, 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 and being just basically angry at the world, you know. And we have so many people in our society today that feed upon a diet of outrage. Uh, this is one of the reasons why you probably hear me from time to time. I'm very critical of the quote unquote social justice movement because social justice, unfortunately, is like picking at a scab. You know, it never heals because they're always blaming and finding fault with people instead of trying to bring peace and healing and reconciliation uh, to uh, the situation. It's always blaming somebody else for somebody else's problems. You know, I just want to say this as a kind of a little bit of an aside. You know, all of us, to some extent, um, have had people, we've had either people or situations or both who, who have set us back, have hurt us, wounded us, wronged us, whatever it is. And, and I certainly, you know, and I'm not here to, you know, strip off my sleeves and show you my scars, but we all, we all have had people and situations and maybe institutions or whatever have, have let us down and maybe have, got, have, have, have injured us or, or maybe have discriminated against us, okay? Um, it's not fun, but you have a choice. You can, you can wallow in that and, and make that a, a, a nice exercise in self-pity, or you can stand up, brush yourself off and move forward. You don't have to let that define you. You don't have to let it even be a part of your life. Um, you, you, can, you can choose, believe it or not, you can choose to be a victim or a victor. And, and I think a lot of people today in our society, especially a lot of young people, uh, they want to just focus on what they don't have or all their disadvantages in life, which they really don't have that many. They, they've, they've been born in probably one of the most beautiful, wonderful countries in the whole world, but they've been poisoned by their 
not their educators, but their indoctrinators, sad to say. And uh, they've been poisoned. Their spirits have been poisoned. You know, they have, been, they have not been given nourishing history and, and uh, they have not been taught with nourishing things about life and about our country and about, you know, good citizenship. You know, they haven't been nourished with those kinds of wonderful edifying things. They've been poisoned with a lot of hate and anger and discontent. And this is where we see with Jesus is that, you know, the people that he's trying to minister to, um, they take a, they take offense at him basically, and they say, "How can you, you know, be telling us that you're from heaven? You're the bread of life." And as a result, you know, they're feeding on, um, you know, malice and animus. Okay, that's not a very good diet. And instead of choosing to taste and see how good the Lord is, they're basically flatly refusing, and they're basically telling Jesus, "Hey, go away. We don't want what you have. We don't want you." So the question might uh, maybe maybe raised be raised uh, is you know how do we nourish ourselves you know on Jesus the bread of life and it's very simple uh, one of those is just daily prayer you know uh, just once just when you wake up in the morning you know say Lord thank you for another day of life uh, maybe if you're uh, interested you can find. Um, a little subscription to Magnificat, which has the morning prayer and the evening prayer, as well as the readings for the daily mass. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, spending time in prayer, you're being grateful. <laughs> just being grateful, I think, goes an awful long way. I think just having an attitude of gratitude, you'll be surprised if you can stop and look and be grateful for the things that you have, as opposed to the things that you don't have. If you try to be helpful to others instead of blaming others. Boy, that's a really great lesson to learn. And then the other thing is, you know, learning, uh, sp spending some time and reading the scriptures. You know, there's, uh, Catholics are now kind of, I wouldn't say they're discovering the Bible, but they're kind of, you know, realizing that Bible reading uh, is a very beneficial thing. I think I said something about that in one of my last videos. And then the, the other thing is, um, <clears throat> is, uh, you know, uh, being just practicing, you know, you know, receiving in prayer, you know, learning in scripture, receiving in prayer, and then putting into practice what you've learned and received. Uh, this little cycle of life, that's how you taste and see the goodness of the Lord. So all I can tell you is that, um, as I just stand here today on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, that, you know, summer's upon us and there's just a plethora, a cornucopia of wonderful things to taste and See, but make sure that what you're taking in is truly not just satisfying you, but is nourishing you in your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. May God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.